Hi, welcome back to Space Thoughts. I usually don't drop a video in the middle of the week because uh, of other things going on, but a real significant event happened the day before yesterday, uh, and this came from the White House, which basically which dropped an executive order that dealt with space resources. Now, space resources have been an issue ever since 2015 when uh, the Space Resource Act, uh, Bill was passed as part of a larger uh, Space Commercial Act. And I think it was in November. It was actually a day before. It was a day before Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Uh, and it's been hugely controversial. And I've been very, you know, been involved to it to the extent of I've been, you know, haranguing against uh, the idea at first, just because it, in my opinion, it still is kind of questionable the way it's being uh, the outer space treaty is being interpreted. But I mean, you know, we've I've come to the conclusion that basically this is going to happen. You know, this is going to be a thing. Now it's very it, it's very been quiet a lot. There's been no additional um, action from Congress on space resources, and the, and the White House from the last administration was very quiet on it. Uh, and up until yesterday, up until day before yesterday, uh, this White House uh, administration has been pretty quiet on it. Now I will note that other countries have this has still been an issue internationally. Uh, a working group was formed uh, in February of 2016, I believe, or was it? Not, not, I can't remember exactly what you, uh, what year it was, but yeah, it's it's the morning, and I haven't had my second cup of coffee. But bottom line is, the it was a Hague Space Resources Working Group that was established on on uh, this. And I actually, uh, after it was formed, I I received an invitation to uh, become an observer. So I thought that was pretty interesting, and uh, I gleaned some interesting insight from that experience. Now I want to talk about this executive order because it's extremely important in what it does. I've been seeing a lot of things on the internet, uh, people chiming in saying, oh, this isn't a big deal. You know, it's basically, uh, it's, it's, a same, it, it's basically the same message. But I'm dropping this video right now because I think it's extremely important of the effect that it has. And uh, let's, go, let's go to the executive order. I'm going to do a side by side here this time. Oh, wrong one. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to go, I'm going to jump right to section two. And Basically, I'm going, to, I'm going to post a link to, the, to this White House order in uh, the description afterwards, so you can go look at it yourself. But I want to jump right to the last paragraph of Section 1, and basically it comes out with the reason for this policy. Basically, it says Americans should have the right to engage in commercial exploitation, recovery, and the use of resources in outer space consistent with applicable law. Now, it's interesting that they use the word, that the administration uses the word should as a term, as instead of asserting that Americans have the right, which basically the space resource law says. So it's coming out with almost not coming out right out and saying, you know what, this is, you know what, Americans have the right. It's a matter of like Americans should have the right. And this is kind of frames the whole um, tenor of the executive order and how and, and, and what it's set to accomplish. So basically uh, what I find really important in this is section two. And that's dealing with the Moon Agreement. And the Moon Agreement is this agreement that was ratified in 1979. It only has 18 members that have either ratified or acceded to it. And when I say acceded to, I mean they've they've agreed to it after it's been ratified. They they've become legally obligated to it after it was initially ratified. Um, so really, its status as binding international law is questionable, especially since the United States, um, the former Soviet Union, and now the Russian Federation, and the People's Republic of China, really the you know the the three biggies at that time, and really arguably still the biggies in outer space activities, um, just they flat out said no, we're not going to even sign on to it. We're going to ignore it. And the point of this is is that. The U.S. is coming out and reasserting that, and right here in Section 2, one, the United States is not a party to the Moon Agreement. Further, the United States does not consider the Moon Agreement to be an effective or necessary instrument to guide nation states regarding the promotion of commercial participation in long-term exploration, scientific discovery, and the use of the Moon, Mars, or other celestial bodies. Accordingly, the Secretary of State shall object to any attempt by any other state or international organization to treat the Moon Agreement as reflecting or otherwise expressing customary international law. And that last phrase is extremely important because last time, uh, last video I did, we I talked about customary international law. It's how it's this, it's this little, it's this basically this way of creating international law or, or accepting as international law um, 
through actions versus written instruments. And over the years, uh, since I've been in the space law arena, I've really, this has really, you know, taken up my, uh, a place in my mind, you know, is that the U.S. hasn't really, hasn't agreed to the moon agreement, and it really isn't, uh, its, its status as international law is questionable at best, but there's always this thing about customary international law. And I think back in 2011, 2012, I wrote an article about this, basically talking about the, you know, the fact that we, you know, the U.S. isn't pushing back on this aggressively, could give it room to creep in and become customary international law. So um, I think essentially that's what what is happening here, where the U.S. is reasserting, boom, we do not, you know, we do not recognize the Moon Agreement. We don't think it's necessary. And oh, by the way, we don't we don't agree to it as uh, expressing customary international law. In other words, any shadows that are creeping in, basically the U.S. is throwing a bright light on the shadow and and basically dissolving any effect uh, it may have on customary international law. People say, well, why is that important? And, and I think it's important for a number of reasons. Most importantly is, like I said, customary international law can be very tricky, it can be very subjective, and it can be very insidious too. Because with things like the Moon Agreement, if you don't push back on them hard, they can creep in, the shadows can creep in, and eventually it can be accepted. And this is, you know, and this is very important. And I think especially for space resources, since um, the Moon Agreement is really the antithesis of what space resources is about, in that space resources basically say that private individuals have a right to convert resources to personal possession. But the Moon Agreement, which is actually modeled after UNCLOS, which is the uh, Convention on the Law of the Sea, basically says that uh, resources are the common heritage of all mankind, which is a really bad, you know, a bad phrase in, some, in, in a lot of arenas. And one of the reasons the U.S. and the Soviet Union, for that matter, uh, disagreed to uh, the Moon Agreement altogether is that common heritage of all mankind language. And, but if you don't push back on that hard, it can creep in and be a shadow. I see this as the U.S. pushing back hard on the Moon Agreement and any customary effect it could have, and basically saying and reasserting the idea of space resources. So in other words, we're, we're reasserting the idea, the U.S. is reasserting the idea that space resources are something, are a personal property interest that can be had by private individuals. They're not a real property interest that requires a lease or an override overarching legal authority and international legal authority to basically manage them. So functionally, that's what Section 2 does. And like I said, it's extremely important. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I've seen a lot of commentary. Oh, this is nothing new. This isn't, this isn't a big deal. This is a big deal because, like I said, it's pushing back on customary international law, which I think is, is just absolutely critical given how insidious customary international law could be. Um, Section three basically is the U.S. taking, in my opinion, a new a new tack in promoting space resources. Now there are two other countries that have space resource laws on the book. That's Luxembourg and the UAE, and it's recently passed uh, space res uh, domestic space law does have a provision for allowing its citizens to harvest and acquire to reduce possession space resources. We haven't seen law, haven't seen language, but it's it's in there. Uh, it's in there. So what is the, the tack right now that's being taken? Instead of letting the, the UN body like COPUS, the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, take this, the U.S. is taking uh, a, an approach, a direct approach with other nations to go out and promote the idea of space resources. And the whole idea is that the State Department and other, other, with, along with other agencies is going to go out and promote this and encourage other countries to get in and we're going to develop norms and standards for space resource harvesting uh, an activity bilaterally or multilaterally between between nations themselves and not through a body like the United Nations. And this is extremely important because this goes back to the building blocks that I talked about earlier. I have a lot of issues with the building blocks. Um, and it's and, and and really and I believe in a, in a sense this is a pushback on the building blocks too because the building blocks envisions a top-down approach. In other words, when I say top-down, I mean a, an approach by a multilateral body that basically will create an international framework that way. 
This is what we call more of a bottom-up approach, where states engage either domestic legislation like the space resource law and go out and actually engage with other nations one-on-one -on -one and not through international bodies or, or legally binding international instruments created at inter through international bodies. So this is an, Section 3 is really a very important part of it. Now, I said, I, I said I, this is a pushback on, uh, on the building blocks. I stand by that. I've caught a, few, I've caught a lot of flack by that. Uh, understand, this is, even though the U.S. initially was very, was very proactive and involved with the, the idea of the building blocks, and this was brought out to me by one of my colleagues, understand, this is a shift in policy right now. This is, exactly, this is being policy being made. These are directives to the, to the State Department to go out and do this. Now, what does this mean for engagement at the UN level? It's probably still going to happen, but this looks like it's going to be the primary driver of how we facilitate the idea of making up uh, ideas of uh, how how people are going to how people are going to behave, any any frameworks or any or any rules or understandings on harvesting space resources. It'll be made between the U.S. wants to do this between states. Um, just one more on the building blocks. Again, it's, like I said, I think uh, I'm really not a fan of them. I, I was allowed to comment as an observer, and, I, and I've commented quite frequently on, on the final drafts of them. Uh, most of the biggest, my, my biggest concern with it deals with customary international law, because uh, if you're reading the comments to the building blocks, which was just published, and I think I made a post in my LinkedIn account, but I'll also leave a link here, the comments reference that the moon, the moon agreement a lot, and that's not a good thing. Uh, and that was that was done under the guise of basically that we're, you know, some of the members come from states that have signed the Moon Agreement, so we want their input too. But the bottom line is, is the building blocks are being influenced by the Moon Agreement, in my opinion. Therefore, we have, if the U.S. were really to agree with, to these and say, okay, we accept these, in a sense, it could be accepting the Moon Agreement or, or as customary international law. That gets back to Section 2 in that last sentence that basically comes out and hits it hard and says, we don't even recognize the Moon Agreement as customary international law. So uh, basically, that that is the gist of this executive order. This is this is a, this is significant. I can't I just can't stress how significant this is. Um, of course, there's going to be downplaying of this because other, because people do have agendas and they do have their you know their their uh, point of views they're trying to push. So a lot of politics is going to be done spinning this up. And arguably, yeah, I'm, I'm probably, I'm, I might be spinning these up too, but understand when I look at these things, I'm looking at the perspective of an attorney, as a lawyer, as a trained lawyer, as a trained space lawyer, as an experienced space lawyer. I'm looking for things and I'm looking at, I'm not looking for what's written, I'm looking for what's not written or what, or what's really being said. And that's really, a t if, if you're a litigation attorney or anything like that, uh, you understand that it isn't so much what you say, hi, but 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 what what what, is, what isn't being verbally written down, but what's really being said behind the scenes. Uh, that's called tact in, in, in some circles. I think my one other point is uh, a lot of people will complain about this and and basically say, well, the U.S. is taking unilateral action. I hear a lot of uh, but I hear a lot of other complaints on the other side saying, well, the U.S. we want the U.S. to lead in space policy. Voila, here we go. In my opinion, this is the U.S. taking the lead. It's controversial. But it's extremely significant, and this is really the first time the U.S. has come out in some some manner and really in, in a written statement like this, a written public statement from the White House, saying, you know what, this is you know we 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 continue to support this idea, we reject the Moon Agreement, and we are going to take we're going to take a bottom up approach to going out and promoting space resources and gain support for it. So this is quick and dirty, um, middle of the week. I'm probably going to write a special issue of my briefing letter for those of you who subscribe and uh, probably going into a little bit more detail. I may work on that this weekend. Anyways, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you're staying safe and healthy. It looks like we're, we're getting about at the, at, the, at the peak of this and hopefully we'll start going on a downward trend soon. Uh, but otherwise, I uh, hope you have a good rest of the week. I don't know if I'm going to do another video this weekend, but uh, we'll, we'll see what time permits and whether I can... Uh, get something that uh, would be interesting to talk about. So oh, I would ask you, if you like this video, to share it and to please subscribe. So, I mean, if it basically, it really encourages me to see, have, have subscribers, people who come back and see these videos. And uh, 
promote and basically, you know, encourages me to take more time to do these videos. So anyways, I hope you have a great rest of the day and uh, take care.